Welcome back to the Christian Theological Dark Web. This episode, we explore probably the most controversial and bifurcating topic, not only in modern Christianity, but in our modern era as well. Genesis 6, 1-4 has a strange passage that has skewed so much of our Christian theological interpretation as far back as the 4th century when Rome adopted Christianity as its main religion. We hack into the different following topics. Who are the fallen watchers? Who are the sons of God in Genesis 6, 1-4? Are they different? Are they the same? What did they do that was so heinous? What have these concepts done to our modern understanding of theology versus our ancient brother's perspective on these topics? Find out today on Who Are the Fallen Angels, Part 1. Howdy, y'all. Welcome back to the Christian Theological Dark Web, also known as the CTDW. Um, as always, we are online. My faithful companion, Shelley German, Aleman. And uh, we are going to knock out a very cool topic um, I find to be one of the most fascinating that there is in the Bible, besides redemption itself that God has offered us. But mm -hmm. to be frankly honest, it ties right into it. And um, the more, let me put it this way, when I really understood what this meant, especially, I realized how little I actually am. Um, and how very cool that actually is. And to put it in, um, to put it in Tim Alberino's terms, <laughs> the Bible <laughs> is the epic about Jesus, not about us. And we get that wrong all the time. We think it's all about us. And we are among the smallest on the totem, to be honest. So, Today's topic, without further ado, is about the Watchers, who they are, what they involve. That's going to be, I mean, this is a loaded show. I'm just giving you guys a, a heads up. There's going to be a lot of information. Um, if, Bigger one. Yeah. Um, there, there are some seriously weird concepts that are not full, that are not common among modern man, but are fast approaching um commonality because of the state of the world uh frankly there's there's not really any way other, around it and and i think that the faster that we understand these things the more we understand the imminence of the time given to us and the importance of the things that we are learning and know so uh that being said we are talking about the watchers guys you can follow us um on a anywhere, actually, anywhere you want. We have tons of social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, although I hate Instagram because they don't promote any of my stuff. So if you like Instagram, go look for us. <laughs> um, we're also on TikTok. Actually, TikTok is a pretty good place to get in touch with us, to be honest. Uh, it's an easy way to see our stuff, um, shorts, and get an idea of what we're talking about in general. Um, you can look at us at solo.com to slash the ctdw again that's solo.to slash the ctdw that has links to everything also our patreon uh, if you'd like to go and support us we would be overjoyed um if not pray for us you know or both do both things so um i guess without further ado i will let shell say hi real quick and then we're going to jump right into it because there's a lot to get to today <laughs> Hey everyone, <laughs> I've got Queenie behind me over here, but she's not walking on my desk, so we're just going to let her sit and be cute. <laughs> she's a Chiple cat. Uh, Chiple, for those of you who aren't border dwellers, is a very needy. Um, Chiple's like. I don't um, know, needy cat. Chiple would be something. Uh, well, we say Chipi, but it's the same thing. Chiple is like. Um, uh, um it's not needy spoiled is a is a better way yeah yeah, yeah well <laughs> st st still accurate Correct. um <laughs> but so long as she's being good trying to keep the bird noise down today a friend of mine had mentioned that they were rather screechy <laughs> recently and oh no they're bad oh so ricky will do the sound <laughs> instead never mind i'll uncover the cage no please don't no. <laughs> Um, this by far is 
one of the most glossed over, if not the most glossed over topics in the Bible. Christians don't know what to do with it. Pastors don't know what to do with it. I have, I'm trying to seriously think if I have ever had any pastor and I've had, I've had a few different pastors. I've been in the church since I was six. Um, so I've, I've had, you know, the, the, uh, preachers and I've had, you know, the, the break it down, let's go into the Greek. What does this mean? What's the difference between what it says in the Septuagint versus the Masoretic? Exactly. <laughs> Which that that's where I sit comfortably. Love it. Break it down. Let's get into the minutia hundred um, percent. And I've had I've had a lot of pastors in between. I cannot think of a time I've ever had a pastor talk about the watchers or Nephilim. Hey, sorry, you said I've had a lot of pastors in between and then it kind of cut out. So let's make sure that we don't miss anything. Oh, sorry about that. I've had, you know, probably because I moved my hands and my <laughs> camera does not like that. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, good. guys. Um, I, I've had a lot of in between, you know, the pastor who preaches to the bell curve and the pastor who, who deep dives and, throughout i've never had pastors talk about the nephilim or the watchers and usually when they read genesis 6 4 is mm -hmm, it 4 mm -hmm. i'm about basically one through four where yeah um they just like say it real quick and then let's get to know we're not going to talk about that we'll talk about this another time we'll talk no, but it like scares the pants right off of people. But I'm in shorts and I'm not scared and I'm not wearing any pants to scare off. So we will dive Glad into you this. Specified that carefully. <laughs> that, was a, that was almost a weird, weird. I was like, I'm in uh, shorts. I'm not in. No, I was like, <laughs> I have um, shorts on. So, but I don't have pants to be scared. This episode's off. That's weird enough. Point. You know, you don't need to add to it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> right, Shell. Um, we will be talking about several things today, and there's going to be. Man, if you guys are watching this episode, I guarantee you there's going to be tons of questions if you ask and if you're watching it. And if you don't ask us, oh, you're going to Rick, probably go look it up, on my um, end. which I'm okay with as well. That's fine. Okay, oh, did it cut off? Okay, I'm going to repeat that. Uh, it's, I don't know what's going on. We're being weird. Um, yes, there's a, lot of, there's a lot to this one. Um, there's a lot, lot to it. So if, if you, I'm, I'm almost guaranteed if you're watching this, and you find this even remotely fascinating, you're going to have tons of questions. We also have tons of questions, believe me. Um, but we're presenting a lot of this information as best and uh, succinctly as we can, uh, because it is it is very um, difficult to parse, you know. And I think that it's really nice yeah. to have someone break it down for you. Uh, I, I've had to read several sources to even begin to kind of toy with these concepts. Watched a bunch of different podcast myself. Um, and that's really helped kind of process the information, go back to the text, read it, understand it. Um, even look at some extra biblical texts to, to help understand what the Bible's talking about. Um, and, and I want to mention something on what Shell had just said that, that pastors like in the West here in the U S they like are desperate to get past this, this passage. Um, and the reason that they're desperate to get past this passage is because it doesn't, it doesn't make sense unless you have the proper worldview and unless you understand how the Jews and how the old exactly. world, frankly, thought about all of these concepts. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not weird. The whole world, the whole, whole world. world, the whole, whole world. world back then. Absolutely. Uh, and it's not weird to the whole world. Um, the whole old world. It's weird to us because we like things to fit into night, nice, neat little boxes. But if you haven't bought any red pills, we're going to definitely give you some today. Um, they will be on offer. Yes, yeah, at a discount. <laughs> um, I, I had to, I don't know who I was talking to. Free 99. <laughs> Free 99. I was talking to somebody yesterday. I was, I was talking to my wife or, or somebody else in Spanish. And um, I literally turned the word red pill into a verb in Spanish. It was quite funny. Um, vamos oh. a red piliar. 
<laughs> I thought it was funny. It means you're gonna re- we're gonna red pill you. That's all it means. Um, but it just sounds ridiculous in Spanish. Better than being suicidal. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> no Clintons in the building. Thank you. Uh, Oof. so I kind of want to get. We're gonna get banned. Yeah, I kind of want to get into, <laughs> and I'm gonna just gloss over this because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it. But I think it's important to understand why pastors gloss over it and how they gloss over it more importantly um do you mind if i take the lead on the seth thing shell no go okay go right ahead yeah, um, yeah, i don't have on hand the actual particular scriptures but that's uh you guys can go and look these up and i can i mean i'll, I'll try and find them a little bit later to put them here in here i'm not going to guarantee you i'm going to have every reference because there's a lot here um but if you're curious and you reach out to me you're like hey i don't see where that's at i will find it if you if you don't believe me for some reason i'm happy to do that um but there is a concept about this, and, and maybe we should just read that those first four verses. That's probably the easiest way to go about this because yeah. people, uh, they start, you know, tripping out on... Well, and... Go for it. I was going to say, um, well, read it first, and and then we'll, we'll... No, we'll do it now. Sorry, guys. I'm you're good, you're good. It's, no, there's, there's a lot of stuff. Um you're going to Sons of Seth, yeah? Uh, I, I was going to, That's what but I was just going to read cool. read the, okay. the, uh, the the passage so that we have some context for the verses, or for the concept that we're going to talk about. Perfect. Um, Perfect. So, are you good? Am I good? Okay. Go. Yeah, okay. go. So Genesis 6, 1 through 4 says the following, and it came to pass, I'm reading out of, what is this version? Sorry. American Standard Version. I actually like the way this one sounded. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the ground or the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Okay. Sons of God. (laughs) And took them wives of all that they chose. Ooh, I like this version. And Jehovah said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever for that he also is flesh. Yet shall his days be a, a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were in the earth on those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in, had sex with, I'm just, you know, explaining, unto the daughters of men, mm-hmm. and they bare children to them. The same were the mighty men that were of the, uh, that were of old, the men of renown. Um, we could keep going on with that. Uh, they get wiped out. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff happens because God has to deal with it. Um, but my point here is uh, to nip this in the bud real quick. Um, there is a common concept, especially in modern seminaries, that talks about something called the sons sons of Seth view about these verses. The Sethian view is that the sons of God are Seth's offspring mm-hmm. and the daughters of men are... Um, Cain's offspring, Cain's Thank daughters. Thank you for clarifying that. It's the only way they can even and try you know to what? fit it into It's so, exactly. It's so one of those things that I'm so like, it, it's not even on the radar that I honestly don't even take that, that view seriously at all anymore. Like, I had never heard that view, like, really well thought out. Um, but it, even just like an overview, I was like, that doesn't even make, that doesn't even bear out, like, even a little bit. Um, so... Wow. What they try to do with that, that, that terminology is say that the Nephilim, um, because in the word of God, it says that they're sons of God. Okay. Well, first of all, they try and say that the sons of God is another word for men. Right. And they're trying to apply that so that they had sex with these women. They took them for themselves as wives, that they were perverse in the way they did it, so on and so forth, because they took them, um, and then that the Nephilim were born unto them, but well, they call those the fallen ones. But that, if we look at Michael Heiser's definition and clarification of what Nephilim is and where it very, very likely comes from, um, it makes a whole lot more sense real quick. Um, I won't get too into the muddy details, but essentially Nephilim does not mean fallen one. Nephilim means giant. It it basically means giant, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, And that's why the Bible... So there are two words. uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. You, you've got those two words, don't you, Rick? Cause I, I will get them wrong. I do. I do know this, um, information it's, it's 
one translation tried to use fallen mm -hmm. um off of off, off of too. a word that yeah you you definitely should do that okay. right there let's just read it real quick um this is literally a paraphrasing from directly from um michael heiser's book the unseen realm which i will uh i will be happy to post um here um that excerpt at least so you guys are able to read it so it says just to, again, I'm just paraphrasing his exact quote. It says, Nephilim are believed to mean the fallen ones because because of the Hebrew word nephal. And nephal has to do with falling in general, okay? Um, there's different ways that you can edit that to where it's like fall away or fall down, fall from. But the problem is, is that grammatically, this doesn't it doesn't bear out in hebrew the, the the grammar fails in hebrew if you try to use the verb this way it messes up so because it causes an uh, an error in hebrew and because of the time where the bible was being written and what was going on at that time it's much more likely a borrowing a loan word as we would call it um from aramaic which is uh naf, naf, nafila i don't know how to pronounce it sorry guys uh, my aramaic's a little weak so um, Nephila is, <laughs> is likely the, the original, the original term it was loaned into or borrowed into Hebrew. And then what happens, and I love this stuff. I think this is super cool. Um, even, even like, a, not even talking about what we're like conceptually, what we're talking about, but linguistically, it's very cool because a borrowing, what happens is, is you take this word, you appropriate it into your language. And if it really sticks, this is why I think it's so important to talk about it. If it really sticks you you start applying your own inflectionary aspects of your language in, onto that word and into that word. Let me tell you what I mean by that for those of you that don't speak linguistic um, academic boringness. Inflection is basically anything that has to do with the grammar itself. So are you still with me, Michelle? Did I lose you? You did for a moment. Okay. You're back now. What's going on my internet? Sorry. Um, so uh, inflection just has to do with, which is what I was talking about a second ago, um, anything that has to do with your grammar. That could be tone. It could be singular, plural. It could be past tense, uh, you know, tense in general. Uh, it could be any number of things. But what a proper loan word eventually does is if it's really accepted into the language, it the language adapts to fit it into the language. And Nephilim seems to be that case um i'm I, again i'll post you guys the full explanation i just don't want to bore you to death with how that happens so if that is the case one we have a problem because nephilim no longer means fallen ones it means giants okay now if giants are being born and we have clear evidence that there were giants being born we know Everyone knows the story of Goliath. I mean, even like lay people know the story of Goliath, right? <laughs> Laika, Laika right, people right. know the story of, of uh, Goliath. So we know that we do have at least one example of a giant that's pretty clear in the Bible. Um, so as a believer, you should already, that should be on your radar. Number two, the problem with the, the expression sons of God being humans is that it comes from the, the term benai Elohim which means sons of right. God in a divine sense. And that's used over and over. Now, as I understand it, the sons of Seth view is that Benai Elohim, they were reading it in a different language. They weren't reading it in the original Hebrew. And so the misconception came in that these were the sons of God. And, and honestly, guys, I mean, this was, uh, I want to say what, like the 17, uh, the 1800s, 1700s where this view Jeez. Is that right? So I don't know how long ago that goes back, Shell? The 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 view where they tried to take the supernatural out <laughs> of this uh, right comes around the fourth century. Oh, that far back. So fourth wow. century AD. Yeah, I that's when the church ago. fathers um the Catholic Church um, basically is firmly in power over uh, the right. Christian worldview at that time. And um, in general, there there was a um, a Catholic falling away of the supernatural. Yeah. And then weirdly enough, also a Hebraic 
falling away of supernatural world oh, wow. view. It's like everybody got too smart to believe in the supernatural. They can still believe God said light and then light was and it's in its wave and particle forms. And, you know, God said this and it was and God did this. And but but then like all the other supernatural stuff, if they could tamp it down, <laughs> they did. <laughs> And um, this definitely, uh, B'nai Ha'adam, or B'nai Adam, mm -hmm. is is what mankind mm -hmm. is referred sons of Adam in um, in Aramaic and Hebrew, right? So B'nai Ha Elohim or B'nai Elohim, it, the the Ha sound is is um, not always used. It's kind of swallowed up sometimes, kind of like dropping off. Yeah, kind of like dropping off the G mm -hmm. in ing words, mm. you know. Um, that's a. I'm hunting. And that's actually instead of hunting. That this, actually is a um, a natural linguistic phenomena that happens at especially at the end of words. Um, words are uh, inadvertently. I mean, it's just it's a, it's a product of of speech. When you finish a word, the end of the word is less pronounced always. So it doesn't really matter which word it is. And slowly, you know, uh, over time, there can be phonetic changes. And even phonemic, which is the actual uh, organization of the, the sounds in the language, can, can shift because of those types of natural progressions where things are just dropping off. Which even now, we, we're kind of, we've witnessed in the last little bit, your example is really good, Shell, about like going, right? We don't even, a lot of people don't say going. Mm -hmm. They just say, I'm going. So much so that we write going. Or or, Sometimes, or gonna. gonna, right? There you go. You know, going to gonna. We just edit all of it. That's uh -huh. a perfect example. Yep. Well, and in Hebrew, you see that you see it a lot with the ha. Mm -hmm. um, even Hashem, Hashem. Uh, you'll see it abbreviated. Hmm. You'll, um, you, but you see it in a in a lot of things. And I unfortunately don't speak Hebrew. I just know, you know, some words and phrases. Uh, but I've seen it enough that I, I can recognize that pattern. Say that one more time. Good night. We um, had some brutal breakoffs today. I know. I saw you freeze. Say it one more time. <laughs> Said I, I have seen it enough that I can recognize the patterns. Yeah. I, I, I'm not in German when, when, you know, people say sprechen Sie Deutsch. And if you're, if you learned Deutsch in germ or in in high school, you know, you go, Bischen Deutsch, Bischen <laughs> Deutsch, which tells them, no, I learned it in high school. I'm an idiot, and I can only speak a little bit. Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't say all that. It just little Deutsch. And then they basically go, <laughs> but well, that's I'm okay. Sure. I, I speak, I speak very good English. I yeah. speak <laughs> English, right? And they always do. I I speak passable English, and you're like, you speak better English than my grandma. Sheesh. You know. I know. <laughs> I know, True but, story. um, so sons of Seth, uh, daughters of Cain, and then why in the world would that make them bad? And here's the deal. Here's where this falls apart. Let me go into, to where it falls apart. Um, you and I, Ricky, were both very logical. We, um, both subscribe more to, um, deductive reasoning than inductive reasoning because deductive reasoning is much more pure. Um, but if you are going to use a tool, keep using that tool in the word. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, you, you, the rule is let the Bible define itself. Correct. And um, what they they do here is there is lineage given. Uh, Genesis is full of so and so lived X amount of years and begat such and yep. such, who lived X amount of years and begat such and such, and then they lived an additional blah bitty blah years <laughs> and then they died. You know, um, it's it's a formula that is very discernible through throughout the Pentateuch. Um, you see it plenty in Genesis and you see it here. You see Seth's lineage, you see, um, Cain's lineage and 
there's not there's not Kane's daughter so and so married Seth's son such and such. Mm -hmm. It's not there. Nope. So that's a good point. I, that's, this, that's correct. This theory doesn't hold good water. And what's more is mundane things weren't given a whole lot of um, importance. And this, if if it was Seth, then they just would have said Seth's son so and so married Cain's daughter such and such. Mm -hmm. It's how it would have been mm -hmm. done, not the the sons of God went in among went into the women and took any they wanted to wife. Mm -hmm. um, that would not have been the the way they would do it. It goes back to, and I know I, I talk about it and it seems like every, um, every episode <laughs> it's the shotgun above the mantle. If you're watching something and they show the shotgun above the mantle, it plays an integral part in the story. Mm -hmm. Somebody going to get shot Bam. or somebody already did, you know, that's, that's what, it's not a new storytelling tool. So um, this here, somebody might try to come back with Sons of Seth being, uh, maybe they can give a, a better definition, but I'm going to tell you it doesn't hold water. To me, it's really lazy. I will just straight up say that it's lazy, it, it's used by people who don't want to recognize that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes. And instead they make that, they make everything human, they make everything postmodern. It's Shelt, let's um a pet peeve. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get all weird and spiritual for a second. Um let's uh let's pray. We're having some really bad quality uh internet right now and i don't think that that's any kind anything other than the prince and the powers of the air trying to mess with <laughs> something that uh, i think is very important and you have i have talked about at great length for a long time and wanting to talk about these things so i'm gonna pray real quick holy spirit okay. i thank you for All this right. time i thank you for this opportunity lord to bring your word in its truth and in its entirety father where we fail may your spirit ring true lord god right now at this time Lord, you have called us to speak your word and speak truth, however uncomfortable or comfortable it may be. So at this time, we declare in your name, Jesus, that you would fix this Internet, that we would not have any more problems, that the prince and, the, and, the, and his powers of the air would have no more sway over what we're doing. In the name of Jesus, make him silent and subdue him. Thank you, Lord. We declare we're going to have an awesome rest of our time, and we're going to get through this in a good way. Amen and amen. Okay. Amen. Um, your last thought was that it doesn't hold water because there's no lineage, uh, genealogy, um, all very good points. Uh, and, and actually, that's right. I, I've for, totally forgotten about the part like, and why would they be evil if they were taking wives, you know, who they chose? And it doesn't make any doesn't. sense because plenty of evil people have had godly offspring and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know, um, it, 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 case in point, read every single one of the kings of uh, Judah and Israel, and you will see my point. My point, it, the Bible makes my point for me very beautifully. Yep. I don't have to belabor it at all. Um, so, Sons of Seth view really doesn't doesn't do it for me. Heiser is not the only person who um, subscribes to that worldview. He is not the only, he didn't come up with that worldview. Mm -hmm. um, rest his soul. I'm so glad that he is, he gets to be with Jesus now. And I'm jealous and um, I'm sad that we don't have him any longer. He, he passed on to the, that unseen realm. Mm -hmm. He um, was so very fond of uh, two months ago, mm -hmm. as of the time of this recording. But, he was so fond of saying the thing about what I'm telling you is that Mike has never had an original thought. And that's what mm. he would say all the time. Good old Mike. Um, none of this, none of this was his, he didn't come up with this. He, he was a, a Hebrew linguist, um, a, a 
scholar PhD, he's a doctor, Dr. Michael S. Heiser, um, has websites still up. You know what? I pay money to that website to be a part of it because it's very good information. Mm -hmm. um, you can watch his shorts. You can watch uh, most, man, most of what he has to offer you can watch on YouTube. Yeah. Honestly, yep. he, there's so much out there. He was so much about getting God's word out there and speaking the truth. Um, it wasn't a monetary thing for yeah. him. Um, but it, this this wasn't his his um, fresh revelation. This was information that he sussed out. <laughs> and if you want to find out what what put him on that path. His, his story's Very really, cool. really cool. I know you and I mm -hmm. know it, Ricky and other people. You can find it again, Michael S. Heiser, H E I S. -E oh, don't you worry. I'll be, I'll be linking um, that book in the description. <laughs> That's yeah. The unseen realm is great. It's um, frankly, a, uh, uh, it's, he's, it's, it's a really good way to just get introduced into all of these concepts generally. Um, if you don't have any understanding of them, I, I seriously rec recommend picking up a copy of that book. I, I have, I should have started there. I wish I would have, um, <laughs> linguistically, I can appreciate a lot of the stuff that he points out. Uh, so, um, it, it is, it is very useful. It's yeah. very, very useful. Um, and, and he breaks it down. He makes it simple. He doesn't try and complicate it, which is great. He does. And it's beautiful. I didn't have Heiser when I was trying to figure out what what is nephilim what are these watchers what what is what is all of this um for me i was uh i was telling rick i was an avid reader i i am an avid reader i that's what i like to do i like to read i like to go into other worlds in my <laughs> head and and i don't care for a lot for dry biography i do like some biographies i like fiction I like science fiction. I like fantasy. C.S. Lewis is hands down. Um, my favorite author always will be. Can't wait to to meet him mm. in heaven um, and tell him thank you for how he has um, touched my mm. life. Heiser will be another <laughs> one. Mike is, is the the they're two of the best authors um, for helping me understand Jesus and understand this world yeah. we live in so much more. But um, for for Heiser, I just, I don't want people to think, oh, it's just Michael Heiser's no. view. It's not at all. And when I came across him, I was like, right? Like, right. That's makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. The what? Nah. -uh. Now I have to go back and reread that. <gasps> Oh, oh, this weird scripture that I've always been like, what in, what the dickens? Yep. Now, it's, it's okay. It's a British show reference. <laughs> um, <laughs> the dickens. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, it makes great sense. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I, I am, I do fangirl Michael yeah. Heiser. I'm not going to lie because the man, um, is anointed and his writings are fabulous mm. and they hold serious water. They, they don't break down with scrutiny. No. Um, and so you'll always get props from me. Well, for, it's for because that. he was intentionally scrutinous. And so that, you know, that really lends itself to, to, um, everything that we're talking about here. Um, oh, he would say be a Berean, be a Berean. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. It, that's important. And then we're supposed to, the word tells us study to show yourself approve a yeah. workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Yeah. yeah. And, and that should be your goal. Christian, that should be your goal. Non-Christian. That's, that's why you go against the Christians. Yep. Yep. That's how you do it. You go and you find that and you say, what about this? What about that? Yep. So, um, um, not just not just Heiser. We do have a whole list of people, and we will be name dropping a little bit more in here. You will hear about Peterson, you, uh, L.A. Marzulli, Tim Alberino's name yep. has already been dropped. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> and you know it's 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 very interesting. They do all kind of uh, live uh, 
with one another on their maps, yeah. on their radar. Yep. Uh, we hope to be in that radar at Derek some point. Gilbert as well. We do. <laughs> we do. We, we really want to live on that map as well. Um, hey. Because oh, it stinks when you're the weird person in the room <laughs> all by yourself. And you're like, Nephilim. And everybody's like, no. A while back, I put I put a, a, a meme up. that It's got the dude from Ancient Aliens with the crazy hair. You know, one from the 90s. And he, <laughs> and he goes, and it said something like, um, why, why is everything going crazy right now in the world? And I just, just a picture of him. And then I put underneath that he just says, Genesis six. That's all he said. <laughs> that's a good explanation. We'll get, we'll get more into that in a second. I remember when you put that yes, up. <laughs> I'll put it up again. Too. Okay, go on, Rick. I'm no, you're sorry. Good, you're good. To... That's cool. We're we're there's a lot to cover. Terrain. There's a lot to cover. Um, and so it's easy to get caught up. I don't I don't fault you at all, guys. I want to show mm -hmm. you something real quick. Um, I'm gonna go through some terms real quick so that we have some clarity about um what's going on here. This is an ugly um d venn diagram that i drew out <laughs> so that you guys would get to so not just a scribble <laughs> yeah so you guys would have a uh, a good concept of what's happening here um so <clears throat> i don't know shell if i do this can you guys see my mouse like that yeah oh, awesome okay so uh, i just want to go through these terms real quick so first of all the word the word of god says the first word we see is the sons of god right here okay and that's the English terminology. It's also the translation um, from the Hebrew, okay, for, uh, sorry, I'm doing over Elohim, but I'm looking at sons of God right here, the blue one, okay? Now, sons of God actually includes the word Elohim inside of it. So that's this red one. Right. Um, and Elohim, to be clear, a son, son of, well, to start for the first one, sons of God literally just means, it's just a divine title. It, it, it's it's practically on par with Elohim. And the only reason they're not exactly the same thing is that Yahweh, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, one being in three persons, is the Elohim, um, if we can put it <laughs> so crassly. Well, he's creator. He's, he, creator. he's above God. all he's, other Elohim. He's the only creator. And all Elohim really means... Because they are... Oh, no, because they are created. Correct. Elohim are created, but... Um, he is the only uncreated Elohim because he is, like the word says, nothing exists without him. All things exist because of him and through him. Um, right. But simply put, just to keep it simple, Elohim just means a, a, a being that is not that is not of the it's not part of the human realm. Um, that's that's just basically an easy way to so put it. Pretty much spirit. Yes, essentially. All spirit are Elohim. No, all Elohim are spirit, but not all spirit are God. God is God. Correct. The large, large E Elohim yes. is is yeah, Yahweh. Well. He is the God. And the lower lower mm -hmm. E Elohim, they are spirit, like Yahweh is spirit. Mm -hmm but they are not on the same level Correct. as he is again, because he's created and they are creator Correct. or sorry, he is creator and they are created. Well, and, and you know what, Rick, I'm sorry. I'm going to just keep this Come up. Dear. You're good. My husband, for a You're sec, good. my husband um, is, is my big sounding board for what we're, whatever we talk yeah. about. And, um, and when I was, you know, walking Danny through this, it, it's complicated. It is very complicated. It's weird. Um, uh, he was like, uh, what? Um, he's like, I don't even know how to ask. And I said, okay, well, <laughs> let me go finish getting ready. And when, yeah, yeah. When, when you've got it together enough to ask, then go ahead and ask me. And so we're driving a little bit later and he goes, so who is to say what, which, which, Elohim then is the God that you worship. Cause I was telling him, oh, that's what I was telling him. Okay. I don't think, I don't know. Did I talk to you about mm -hmm, Ricky mm -hmm. Gervais? I did on our Marco. I love it. So Ricky Gervais put out a, um, I don't know. He was in some short of his, and he I've says, I'm great. an atheist. 
I love it too. He says that means that there are two thousand seven hundred gods that I don't believe in, <laughs> and I mean they, there's more. If you go back to our holy yoga episodes, you'll remember that there are thirty three million. So obviously there's a lot, but anyhow, whatever number you use, he said, and Christians and Jews are almost atheists too. There's they they just don't believe in two thousand six hundred ninety nine gods. <laughs> And you know what? On a surface, that is what it sounds like because we are monotheistic. I believe in all of those gods. I believe that they exist. They are little G gods. And when my husband said, well, then, you know, how do you know which one to worship? I can very easily, I I, I, I was like, oh, this is an easy one to answer. Ding, ding, ding. Yes. Because Yahweh created everything. Mm hmm mm -hmm everything else is created mm -hmm. all those little g gods you know what they're spectacular they have way more power than we have as humans um alone anyhow uh, if if we are humans who are not followers of christ then they have way more power right. than we do but yahweh has the ultimate power and jesus said greater is he meaning the holy spirit who is in you than he, meaning all of those little G gods that are in mm -hmm. the world. So that's that's an easy way to break mm -hmm. it down. Um, and hard, I don't even know. Sorry to to wreck it for everybody, but Ricky and I believe in all the gods. We believe in them. We don't worship a, a, them. We do not serve good, them. A good way to uh, that I really. I really wanted to clarify this point because people are already like pulling their hair out, thinking about the fact that there's more than one God. Um, there's, there's two caveats I want to lay down. One is that the word, the word God in English is constructed around a worldview that indicates Jesus, son of God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit as God. You still with Michelle? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, cool. I it just froze for a second, so I didn't know if it cut out. Um, so because English is formed around this concept, the idea that there would be anything but one God is totally foreign. Um, it's so bizarre. It's like, well, what do you mean, gods? Well, because in Hebrew, that's, I mean, that's just the way it is. And um, as far as I know, there is no uppercase or lowercase in Hebrew. Um, that's that's a, a contrivance from English that we use to make sense of um, respect. Uh, it's it's a yeah yeah um, uppercase and lowercase is, it has to do with with a, a sense of respect. Where, whereas in other languages, there might be a whole different verbal tense or different word for uh, for some type of honorific or, or tense or, or uh, respectful term, right? Um, in this case, we refer to uppercase Elohim because we're referring to our creator, Yahweh. We're, recur we're referring to Jesus right. Christ, son of God, who died on the cross for our sins, redeemed us. And by him and him Big alone, we God. live. The Holy Spirit who convicts us of things that are wrong and shows us the right direction so that we can have a perfect and, and unblemished life and in, in one that's deeper and more close to him all the time. So that's when we say Elohim uppercase, that's who we're talking about. When we say lowercase Elohim, it's anybody else that's on a spiritual plane that is not of this world. So that, just to clarify, right. just to clarify. Now, um, the the big big E little E is the same as the big yeah. G little G in God's it, for correct, and and that's where expedient correct, and that's where Benai Elohim Benai Elohim comes from uh, because Benai B Ben right, which is refers to son. And then son of, so son, son of. of Elohim, son of, son of God. Um, in this case, th this Elohim being the creator, right? The creator of all things. So th those two out of the way, piece of cake. Now we move on <laughs> to the watchers, to the watchers, the watchers. Um, now the watchers also fit into this diagram nicely because they are sons of God. They are also Elohim. Um, they share all those characteristics, but they are a particular class of Elohim or sons of God. 
Um, and we'll, we'll say sons of God may be a little bit easier for you guys because that's the terminology used in Genesis uh, 6, 1 through 4. So we'll just stick with that. Um, but they are also referenced in other texts as watchers. And watchers insofar as they watch over, quite literally, the affairs of man. And um, you still with me, Michelle? Okay. Yeah. I'm they right watch here. over the affairs of man and men, excuse me, and they have influence in the affairs of men. Um, and we can see that from a lot of other texts. We're going to take a look at the book of Enoch here in a second. Um, and I'll give you guys some, some concepts there. Now I, I'm not going to get into that, but we'll talk about why Enoch is important and why it's relevant as well. Did you want to say something, Sean? Right. Yeah, I Go do. Ahead. So with the watchers right there, Deuteronomy 32 eight and nine is where we get the information that God um, apportioned the earth mm. to the number of the sons of God. Again, this is where that Sethian view comes in and they will say that was according to the sons of Israel. The thing is, is in, um, in Deuteronomy 32, there was not at the time that God did this, there was not an Israel. <laughs> um, this apportioning happened before, before Yahweh said Abraham, Abraham, or Abram, Abram. This is eight and nine, right? Sean? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 32 verses eight and mm -hmm. nine. And this is often referred to as the, uh, Divine Council mm -hmm. worldview or the Deuteronomy 32 worldview, which um, Rick and I are definitely subscribed to. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes everything in the Bible fall into much, much better place. And there are people a whole lot smarter than us that, like we said, we, we go to, oh man, <laughs> um, faux show. But um, and we'll we'll give you again sources there. Man, there's there's a lot of scholarly work. Tons. Not, uh, yeah, it, like good scholarly mm -hmm. work. Some of it is is hard to read through. <laughs> Even sometimes some of Heiser's stuff is. But uh, Derek Gilbert has a book, and um, I'm opening my Kindle Brilliant because dude, it's by the one way. of the books I'm reading. Um, Really good. Gilbert House Ministries, by the way. View from the Bunker podcast uh, is one of his. View from the Bunker. It is so good. And his wife, Sharon, writes um, uh, Christian fiction that's also well written and real interesting. And um, I know, like like I said, we, we'll always try to give people their credit because the they're. You know what they they work hard from from uh, or they work hard for this and we benefit mm -hmm. from their their hard yeah, work. For so sure. I'm a big big fan. Um, the Great Inception is the Derek Gilbert book that um, that I would recommend for people. Sit down, notepad, pen it. Um, he does a good job, total scholarly work. Um, he, it, it, his is, he's a Christian. I believe he's even a pastor. Um, his teachings are good. He, he very much loves God's mm -hmm. word, but he chose to do a scholarly book based on not the Bible, but based on like Sumerian, um, history and archaeology mm -hmm. and uh Super Egyptian it's it's really great but he didn't do it from a biblical you know here's what the bible says about all these things he he, he brings in what the bible mm -hmm. says but he he has so much extra biblical um sourcing it's it's a great scholarly piece, yeah. whereas like Ryan Peterson's Judgment of the Nephilim, wow. um, his is not extra biblical. Um, his is very biblical. These are all the scriptures, blah, blah, point, 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 point. Mm -hmm. This is what um, Ignatius said in 
340 AD mm -hmm. about this da, 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 and his sightings are are I mean he would get an A. His 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 source and sightings are perfect. Um and I, I'm amazed. He like goes to people who, you know, wrote about the subject matter of the watchers and the Nephilim and the 17th 18th centuries yeah. you know and you're like what people people were recent christians were researching this stuff then and yes yeah, they, they were. were that's that's what i mean by we're not alone this is a <clears throat> tizer's ideas um there is so so much and and we can give you uh, the names of some of the books that we've read we're just scratching the surface here we will talk a lot about the nephilim about the watchers um past uh exploits of theirs future exploits and current exploits mm -hmm. um over you know numerous pod podcast episodes because there's so so very much but we will not be the ones we we can never stand alone on this um we are definitely standing on the shoulders of giants no pun no pun intended, intended. <laughs> <laughs> with this and so i just wanted to to put that out yeah. there and i'm sorry rick i keep interrupting <gasps> your lot. beautiful venn diagram nah, nah, that's cool. everybody gets a good look at it um, see, see how beautiful <laughs> I draw. Uh, what great circles you yes. do. <laughs> <laughs> Lopsided. Um, so the watchers are basically, like I said, they just watch over humanity and, and really, um, they do obviously get involved, uh, which is what we're about to talk about here in a second. Um, and actually we've already talked about those sons of God, um, that chose to take women for themselves, um, did so illegally, illicitly. Right. This was right. a an aberration before God. Uh, it was an unaccepted transaction, unacceptable transaction, I should say. Uh, but it was done in such a way that it was allowed, not good, not not per not permissible, but like technically permissible, and with it carried some severe, serious consequences. However, this this group that we're referring to, um, and we're not going to get kind of muddied up in the water because I kind of want to make sure we stay on on target here. The Watchers and the Banished are the same. We'll call them tribal group, I guess, of uh, of the angelic race. Um, the the Banished come only from the Watcher correct, part. Correct. Correct. They are of the they are specifically Watchers that disobeyed uh god's orders that uh chose uh, you could also call them the wicked watchers for alliteration's sake like shell said um credit where cre credit <laughs> is due and um these uh these in these beings these individuals uh actually made an in this intentional movement to usurp the power of mankind and a lot of these concepts I'm really drawing on from Tim Alberino, Birthright. Watch, read his book if you get a chance. It's a phenomenal yeah. book as well, and it explains a lot of these concepts really well. Uh, also, in in a very epic way. I mean, he's just such an epic writer. He's such an epic dude to listen to. Check him out if you get a chance. Um, so that kind of explains who we're talking about. These banished. When I say banished, and this is a, this is our term. I'm using this term on purpose so that we know exactly right, who we're right. talking about. Um, you as the audience, so you guys know that there, there's no specific banished word in the Bible or anything. I'm just using it to isolate a group of, of uh, angelic beings, right? Of, of uh, B'nai right. Elohim, of sons of God, Elohim, watchers, whatever you want to call them. They are the banished ones. And a lot of people will use fallen angel. Yes, which is correct. For this term, kind of. Yeah, I mean, it's not wrong. It's just right. I, am, I am a stickler for linguistic purity. And I, I think that that has great benefit when you're doing research uh, and especially when you're ex you're doing an expository uh, explanation of something. Right. Like you I don't know what other kind of explanations aren't expository, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but I chose and Shell and I really hashed this out that I, I was I told her we're going to talk about 
the ones, these particular watchers that did this thing, um, or at least all agreed to do it, right? Um, they will be referred to on this podcast as the banished, the banished and in a subset, the banished sons of God. Um, that obviously leads us to a uh, point that is that actions, especially illicit actions, have consequences. Um, <clears throat> therefore, let me go back to this real quick here. Let's zoom out again. Pew, pew, pew. So you guys can see that. These banished. Um, are, are we good? Am I good to continue with this? Is there anything you wanted to touch on? Before? Yeah, yeah. Go okay. ahead. I, I will add something, but not yet. Go, go cool. right ahead. So these banished, uh, and we can look back at uh, Genesis um, 6 verse, I want to say it's verse 3. I might be wrong. Uh, no, it's verse 4. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God, that is the Bene Elohim, the watchers, the banished, came in unto the daughters of men and they bear children to them. The same were the mighty men that were of old, the men of renown. So just to give you guys kind of a refresher on that, these are the Nephilim. And again, they are not the fallen ones. They are the giants. This is, the, this is who we're referring to. So from women, <laughs> from human women and angelic beings, watchers, the banished, these creatures were created and they were, this hybrid. hybrids they were obvious uh aberrations to god because first of all god didn't god didn't put put uh, the watchers there to to procreate in the first place he, he put them there to watch over the affairs of men and while the angelic race can share many of the characteristics that we as humans can do they weren't put there for procreation in fact that's why they sought the daughters of of men um human men they, they wanted them they desired them um, they lusted after them. The um, biblical account goes so far as to say, I believe it's in Genesis 19 or 20, that they 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 sought, sought strange flesh. And I'll get into that a little bit more. But essentially, I think what's up? Second Peter. Oh, is it Second Peter? Second Peter. Oh, my bad. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it was Genesis 19. I don't know why. Um, I think that's a Sodom account, right? Sodom and Gomorrah, right around there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, which, I mean... It plays into it. It is an account. Indeed. Yeah, 100%. Um, so these Nephilim were born, but the, they were aberrations. They were not legitimate creatures. And 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 I'm really going to draw on a lot of Tim's stuff right now to kind of give a little bit of explanation. And I'm not going to go super into the Nephilim right now because that's not really what we're trying to, to uh, get into. There's a lot there, and we will get into it. But just to give you guys something to wrap your head around so we, you know what we're going as far as a podcast is concerned. Um these watchers came down and um, took these women, had progeny, which were hybrid, and had these Nephilim. Now, these Nephilim were not acceptable to God, and I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself, but they eventually were wiped out because God's like, I'm not going to have these giant creatures. And there was all sorts of crazy stuff going on. They were... Uh, killing each other. They were killing humans. I mean, they were eating humans. They were eating. They yeah. were, uh, they were just massacring the earth. They were, they were laying waste to the earth basically. Um, well, and the birth of many of them was, was killing women correct. if they even made it to, because these were giants. Giants. That's why the Bible calls them giants. Um, Rick, if you don't mind right here, I want to interject that the Greek, term for nephilim is titan oh correct there you go these these are the same it, um beings that you know of from greek and roman mythology called the titans mm -hmm. um or the demigods so pericles hercules um uh in Sumerian, it was, oh, what is his name? Oh, the silly me. Gilgamesh, um, the oldest written um, work is the the Epic of Gilgamesh. People will say that 
uh, the Jews stole the story of <laughs> Noah from the Epic of Gilgamesh. Um, the, so the the demigods, the titans, um, you'll you'll find these throughout through throughout just about every culture. I would I would go so far as to say through throughout every culture. Yep. Um, it's it's very interesting. I, I was telling Ricky I just did a simple. Uh, uh google search earlier and um what did i put in i put in i have to go back up to the top sorry guys list of demigods just yeah. list of demigods and um first hit wikipedia yes i know all about wikipedia i went to college <laughs> <laughs> It was never a, a considered a reliable source, um, although a lot of teachers allow it now, which is so crazy. I know. But it, there's Greek mythology, there's Egyptian, there's Roman, there's African, there's Philippine, there's Manipuri. I'm sorry, guys, I don't know what that is. Um, there's Hindu mm -hmm. mythology, there's Norse mythology, there's Celtic mythology. There's Amirani, um, who is a, a oh a Georgian, so uh, as in Georgia, um, above the Middle East, down in the Upper Mediterranean, uh, Georgia, that Georgia. Mm -hmm. There's Sumerian. There's Maori. There's Hawaiian. There's Assyrian. It's it, and then in today's <laughs> some of some of the demigods in today's um, it, this I don't I can't even call it mythos. This is our fiction: Wonder Woman, Percy Jackson, <laughs> Annabeth Chase, <laughs> <laughs> Rain in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. The list goes on. <laughs> well, yeah. it's it's not I mean, it's not weird though. I mean, these are all. You know, all, all this stuff is cyclical. Uh, you know, that's why. Absolutely. That's why when the old world talks, it's 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 kind of unfathomable to me. Um, I, I would say the only thing that's that's a paradigm shift really is the actual coming of Christ and redemption um, by Him. But that that story has played out time and time and time again, continues to play yeah. out um, because it's it's His story. Um, and I know that people always say. That's his story, brother. It really is his story. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. That's why he says that. That's why that's what Paul tells yep. us that because it really is about him. Um, it's it's all about what he's doing. Absolutely. And what what I mean, he he gets the glory. He's the one that gets the glory, not us. Um. So I'm I'm actually super quick. I'm almost done with with my portion shell, and then we can move on to anything you want to talk about or uh, the Anakian stuff at that point. Okay. Um, so real quick, guys, I just wanted to highlight, uh, we can look, we don't even have to look at it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of explain it and I will post it. The only thing I was going to get to was obviously Noah was commissioned by God to build a boat and preserve a bunch of animals and his family. Now, can you still hear me? Okay, Shell? Yeah, I can okay, hear cool. you. Go on. Now, why is this important? Because we can get more into this and we certainly will, but I, I can't, I just don't have enough time to get to everything because there's a million things, but the gene pool was corrupted. Let's just say that the gene pool was so corrupted that God had to wipe the slate clean. That my friends is the purpose of Noah building the ark. And God, I went That's back and read right. this during the week and I was actually pleasantly surprised to see that God was, uh, looking at the animals, the particular animals that were being selected to make sure that there was no alterations with them. Like he, God was very specific about what he was doing with Noah. Um, yeah. And so I think that's why he, he, he brought the animals to Noah yes. and didn't tell Noah, you go out and you find them. Yep. 
Yep. That's exactly right. Um, that makes, you're totally right. That makes perfect sense. And so having said that, um, and Shell and I both ascribe to this, uh, this view. And, and I think, I don't know about you, Shell, but I literally just like realized this week that I, or like the past few days, like that is what I think. I think that that's accurate. Um, so what am I saying? When the flood came, it wiped everything out. And along with it, these Nephilim, these Nephilim were wiped, mm -hmm. wiped out with it and the banished were wiped out with it too. But when I say wiped out, I mean, they were taken asunder. They were taken under the earth when the floods receded from the earth and went into the deep, back into the deep, like the word says, because the, there was waters that burst forth from the deep and the flood that was raining mm -hmm. down. So it was not just one thing. Um, and there's really solid evidence for why we should believe that or why we could believe that. Um, and that personally is the, the, the view that I ascribe to, but that is not really what I'm getting at at the moment. What I am getting at is that the Nephilim were non-corporeal after that. They lost their bodies. Right, right, right. They no longer retained them. They died. They died. And as a hybrid, what happens, right? What the heck happens? Well, if you're an aberration and you weren't, you were neither designed nor ever, I won't say conceived because God knows all things, but you were not intentionally uh, allowed. You were not meant to exist. Let's just say that. God didn't make yes. you. Yes. God didn't make God didn't make, make you. Right. And, and the type of creation, it was an aberration to him because angels were not made to procreate and humans were, we were made to have families right. and, and grow and multiply across the earth, which is what the word says. So, um, what happens to you? Well, you become what we call a demon. Right. And that, that's what demons that's are. What demons demons are. are not fallen angels. They are not the fallen sons of God, the fallen watchers. Um, they demons are the disembodied, the unclean spirit. That's what demon mm -hmm. means. Unclean spirit of the Nephilim. There's no place for them in heaven and hell isn't ready yet. Yeah. Which is um, a whole other topic. Holy moly. It is a whole other topic. So right now, and when Jesus, we get this from Jesus. Jesus tells us that um, his his disciples were trying to uh, cast out a demon and wouldn't go. And they said, what did we do wrong? And he said, these only come out with, fair, with, with prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. he, and he said, what happens is if you, if you banish a demon from a human, then they go wandering in a dry and, um, oh, what is the word that they, dry and arid, arid places. place. Mm -hmm. So uh, hot and arid places. So, um, you know, they think like deserty. And what they want is to live in a nice, warm, moist host. In other words, mm -hmm. us. They miss their flesh. They miss their bodies. And they their, the their goal to is this. to be inside a body. Right. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Just just pile on another reason <laughs> that, that they hate the humans. Um, so their their original state was nephilim mm -hmm. nephilimic because there's there is no place for them to go no heaven no hell they're stuck here on the same plane that we're on but very seldom can they get over to the physical on their own they have to be in a body mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. it um, we, we see some things, um, infestations, manifestations, and you know what? I'm not really into demonology, um, partly because they don't, they don't deserve my time. Um, however, I, we do need to know our enemy, but not, not to the point where he's getting glorification mm -hmm. through learning mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. him. So um, I'm I'm not all that big on demon possession or oppression versus, you know, uh, whatever. And I know it's a hot topic and it's super interesting. I like I get it. Uh, it's as interesting for me, maybe more interesting for me than it is for a lot of people, because a lot of people are just scared witless of it. Mm. And I'm just interested in it. It's fascinating to me, but I don't want to give 
them a lot of glory. Sure. So I limit myself <laughs> because otherwise I'd, I'd be really interested in it. Um, but there is a big resurgence right now. I think there are a couple of, of Catholic priests who have done <laughs> books. They're both exorcists. And, and I think it's two different guys because I know uh, Rick and I were talking about this yes, one. Yes, there, there are two um, guys in particular. You're, you're very right. Okay. I, I it seemed like they had different names. And then my mom was telling me about this other father yeah. and she got his book and, and um, whatever. There's a resurgence. People people recognize that there is a supernatural realm. Mm -hmm. We don't like it necessarily. <laughs> we don't want to acknowledge it. Um, but at the same time, we're fascinated with it. Thus the reason the exorcist and all of those type movies um, make so much money and have so much following. That's why there are so many supernatural podcasts mm -hmm. um, because, because, we do know there is something to this. There's something to the fairy tales, to the, to the grim fairy tales. And, um, and we want to know more about it. And so when we pretend that it's all absolutely fake, we do ourselves a great disservice. And honestly, we really don't believe it. You know, we all just go around pretending like we see the emperor in clothes and we all know he's naked, but none of us wants to point and say so. Right. Um, well, it sounds like COVID. So, yeah, there. <laughs> um, I was going to say the name Clinton's of Clinton's in COVID in one episode, Ricky. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, no, let's not do that. Um, the, <laughs> the one that you're thinking of shell is called the one that we, you and I watched, of uh, that particular priest is called Michael and the exorcist. <laughs> the father's name is Dan Rehill. Um, oh yeah. The other one is, is somebody with a more exotic sounding name. Yeah. He was a, he was a banker, <laughs> I think on wall street is kind of crazy story. Um, that is, it was very interesting. It's very cool, man. God does some crazy stuff, man. Um, so Basically, that's. I just wanted to start out with some definitions so that we had some clarity. So, just to review super quick, Elohim are basically non-Earth dwellers, uh, they're, or they're not human, is a better way to say it. Uh, they are divine. Spirit. Sons of God are basically anything that is not Yahweh, <laughs> Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, uh, which are the same one. The Watchers are the ones that deal with with our world directly and uh, influence and watch over uh, us as well. Um, we can call them angels, but it's easier to call them watchers. Rick, What's up? sorry, I'm going to interrupt you again real quick. In um, Deuteronomy 32, mm. they're, they're commanded to um, tell their nations about Yahweh. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. And in Psalm, yeah, in Psalm 82, um, God tells them, like he really takes him to task and and tells him because you are wicked because you yep. don't um administer justice even though you you are sons of god you're gonna die like men mm -hmm. um so there's they were given not they weren't just here to like be benevolent watchers like the the name supposes yeah. that they were to Sounds teach passive. us about god yeah. yeah they they had they had a, mm. a a job that they were sent here to do and um they didn't do it oh they didn't do it <laughs> i i assume some did i mean i don't I, man if every single one of them was derelict at their duty like that's crushing Jeez. to me so i'm really but i i don't know of any any source that says that there are some that are still doing their job here i hope there are i don't know I that there are so. if anybody knows of anything please let us know but i've not heard of any kind of Correct. teaching on that i mean it's hard enough to get any kind of teaching generally <clears throat> speaking as it is so yeah Yep. 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 Um, so anyway, just to sum it up super quick, I'm almost done here. Really just summing it back up for you guys. It's super interesting. I'm glad you said that show. Um, the banished are the watchers that at least the watchers that disobeyed God and chose to come here to earth. 
um, some subset of them, at least a subset, um, taking women, human women as wives and having children by them, which are the Nephilim and the Nephilim were eventually wiped out. Um, largely we'll get into that. That's a whole other topic as well at some point. Um, and they are, their disembodied spirits are demons. So I'm going to stop sharing cause we have cleared that bad boy up. Thank you for watching this episode of the Christian theological dark web. Please stay tuned as we are dropping our continuation of this episode on Monday, May 3rd, where we cover the banished from the Book of Enoch, myths and legends around these figures, and more about the creation of the unholy offspring and what that truly means. Please follow us wherever you follow podcasts and rate us five stars. We'd also love to hear from you on social media as well. You can always email us at the Christian Theological Dark Web at gmail.com. You can also give on Patreon on patreon.com slash the CTDW. This has been a production of CTDW Studios. God bless, Shalom, and Maranatha.